the old swimming hole where the creek so still and deep looked like a baby river that was lying half asleep and the gurgle of the water round the drift just below sounded like the laugh of something we ought to just know before we could remember anything but the eyes of the angels looking out as we loved paradise but the merry days of youth is beyond our control and it's hard to part forever with the old swimming hole oh the old swimming hole james whitcomb riley Welcome to the Ozarks. And the beginning of season two. Yeah, we're so glad to have you here with us. Thank you for tuning in. We've been living here for about the past year. Uh, in July of last year, we moved from Savannah, Georgia to a small town in Southwest Missouri called Springfield. So we've had about a year to kind of visit this place, explore, and we have a lot to show you. We can't wait. For that reason, because this is a little bit of an homage that we've been calling home for a while, and we have a lot of friends here, this is gonna be a little bit longer of an episode, but stay with us because at the very end of this episode, we have some special news regarding season two that we cannot wait to share. But before we get too deep, Jessica, why don't you kind of share a little bit about the Ozarks? Yeah, the Ozarks is considered a region that starts in about the middle of Missouri and goes to the northern part of Arkansas. Kansas and Oklahoma a little bit are included in that region, but the Ozarks are known for their waterways. There's creeks, there's rivers, there's streams. There's um, tons of lakes, and also those waterways carve out and make room for lots of caves. There's over 7,300 discovered caves in Missouri, which gives it the nickname the Cave State. We're actually going to explore some of those on this episode, do a little bit of spelunking. The, the waterways and the lakes, they have a huge, huge impact on what people do for recreation here. Yeah. On the weekends, everyone gets out of their house. No one stays indoors. Everyone has a boat and everyone dreams of having a second home on the lake to retire to. So some of the big lakes around here that you might have heard of, Lake of the Ozarks, Bull Shoals Lake, uh, Lake Tanny Como, Table Rock Lake, Lake Stockton. Buffalo River. The, Buffalo River, my river. gosh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, we're actually gonna, you're gonna get a chance to see a little swimming hole we found on the Buffalo River. Uh, with our friends the Burks. Yeah, it was awesome. It was pretty cool. You can't help but get outdoors when you live in the Ozarks or exploring the Ozarks or vacationing here. It makes sense that Johnny Morris started Bass Pro Shop here. Yeah, uh, there's several famous people from this region, in case you didn't know. Brad Pitt, a terribly ugly individual. Don't know how he's made it thus far, but <laughs> people in Missouri claim him. Uh, John Goodman is from the Lake of the Ozarks. Mark Twain. Uh, the guy who wrote The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. And yes, Johnny Morris. Uh, Johnny Morris is the founder of Bass Pro Shops. His fingerprint is largely felt all throughout the Ozarks as he's a huge land con uh, conservationist. Um, and he's done some beautiful uh, landscape work that we get to, we're hoping to show you uh, towards the end of this week's episode as well. Branson is a big, big draw for tourists in the Ozarks. It's a town you've probably heard of. Uh, it used to be kind of the, the, the center for country western music in the 60s and 70s until it moved to Nashville. Branson got its start from a little theme park called Silver Dollar City. If you've never heard of it, we're gonna take you there today. The kids are pumped. It's yes. super cool. You're gonna get a chance to see it all. So it's like a turn of the century theme park that everyone walks around in like early 1900s garb, but some really cool attractions as well. Branson was built around this theme park. And if you've never been to Branson, it's it's a lot like Sevierville or Gatlinburg in Tennessee. The biggest difference is there are tons, I'd probably say no less than maybe two dozen Vegas style shows throughout Branson that you can go and see. Uh, it's claim to fame is uh, a stage show called Shepherd of the Hills. <laughs> it was uh, one of the uh, America's first best-selling novels and it's a true story about how a missionary came in to do missions work with the people of the Ozarks and the opposition he faced against the bald knobbers, 
and, and some other people. If you never heard the term bald knobbers before, Google it. It's pretty impressive. It's like a bunch of crazy arsonist, hood-wearing, mafioso type of people from the hills of the Ozarks. Uh, and Shepherd of the Hills is an outdoor screenplay where you can actually go and watch this um, at their theater. And it's, it's phenomenal. It's super cool. Yes. If you, if you do any show in Silver Dollar City, go see Shepherd of the Hills. We're super happy to have you here, uh, kind of enjoying this with us. Uh, let's go explore Silver Dollar City. Yeah. Okay, we're at Silver Dollar City. The name came from Marvel Cave. Back in the day, Marvel Cave only cost one silver dollar to enter and tour the cave. That's where the Silver Dollar City came from. The price of admission has gone up a little bit since then, but it's still really affordable to get in. Okay, so you might be asking, how do you do a theme park with COVID going on? It's a great question. They're taking a lot of precautions and they're being super safe. So before, when you arrive at the parking lot, before you get on the train that takes you into the park, um, kind of like Disney World has, you know, the monorail that takes you from their big uh, parking lot to the Magic Kingdom. They ask you four questions and you have to answer no to all questions. They take your temperature to make sure you're good to go. They then give you one of these fancy wristbands, which makes sure that you've been clear. You do have to maintain a face mask uh, when you are in the park. But other than that, it's, um, business as usual. I saw one sign from a theme park that said, I think it was from China, scream inside your hearts. So that's what we're going to be doing today so we don't spread our germs. We're going to do a lot of screaming inside of our hearts and inside of our mask. Questions, did you get more people wet or did more people get you wet? More people got us wet. Yeah. Yeah, more people That's right. You know who got you wet? You. Miss Chanel. Okay, so here we are at Silver Dollar City, and what you're seeing in this video is actually our second night here. Uh, we had such a good time, we, we had to come back, and it so happens that there was a concert. It's like one of the first concerts in Silver Dollar City yeah. uh, for the whole season due to COVID and everything. Everyone's wearing masks. Uh, had a great time. Yeah. But we learned something really cool while we're here. USA Today ranked this park the number one theme park in America. And it's really easy to see why. It's its theme is really, really unique to this area. It's not like someone just came in and dumped an amusement park in place. It's It really fits with the Ozark theme. So you're getting this really rustic vibe, turn of the century, industrial revolution 1880s, era yeah. stuff going on. It is, it's super cool. 
but it's very modern and very, very convenient as well. So uh, you'll want to make sure that if you ever in this area to come and check it out. church family and also our homeschool family, a community co-op that we're a part of called Classical Conversations. And um, they have just become our best buds. They're really good friends of ours and we can't wait to hike with them today. Yeah, I got freezing! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you ready to go? Yeah, let's go. All right. You guys ready to go? <laughs> this is the Lost Valley Trail. It's right off the Buffalo River, about maybe 20 miles uh, east, no, sorry, west of Harrison, Arkansas. So this is, they call it the heart of the Ozarks. And the Buffalo River is the first national river in America. Uh, this trail is pretty cool. It's got a waterfall, it's got a cave, um, it's got our friends. And um, yeah, this is gonna be a really fun hike. Did you spray the bugs back? I'm sorry, I should have brought it. <laughs> We're not going to take it out till we get to the cave, okay? What? And he, uh, he wow, look at the water gone. So typically what you're seeing right here is a big, big waterfall that would come out of the mouth of this subterranean little river and it would flow and it would flow this whole entire area. This is typically full of kids swimming with their parents, jumping rocks. But uh, Missouri and Arkansas are in like a stage one, stage two drought. We haven't had any rain here, significant rain. Gosh, I want to say like eight weeks. So this thing's fried up. It's just a little trickle right now, but it's really fun and relaxing to come to in the summer when there's lots of water coming down this. <laughs> you guys having fun? Yeah. We can take the camera if you walk through this puddle and hand it to us. I
see back there. But this little space is about maybe a, maybe what, 50 yards till you hit the uh, open room. We love you and we're really careful. You got there that fast? Alright, so I think we should turn the, the, cam the lights off. All right, come here, come here, stand by me. Everyone, everyone stand by someone. All right, on three. Return the lights off in three, two, one. Turn them off. <laughs> that did not last very long. <laughs> What you looking for, bud? Looking for tadpoles and fish? Have you gotten it yet? about our friends, Pamela and Matt, and their two kids, Eva and Ralph, is that they always love to be outside. I mean, we're drawn to them because they have the bike stories, they have the cool hiking stories, they know about every single park every. within every 100 mile radius of where we are. Um, they're just a plethora of knowledge of nature, and it's what we love to do, is just to get outside and just enjoy the creation from our creator. And so we were just wondering what your guys' philosophy or family mission is behind that. Is there something that drives you out every Saturday instead of sitting in front of the TV? We do a lot of resting. We like to be at the house too, but uh, I think ultimately we, we know that God reveals himself in nature. Well, I mean, I think that what he said is we want to teach our kids that this is God's world and he's everywhere. His fingerprint is literally in every bush, tree, river, trail. If there's something that we need. We need connection to him and to see his artistry. And we think often and try to remind ourselves of that Deuteronomy passage is called the Shema, 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 um, where as you go along your way, you walk along the road, you lie down, as you sit up, tell your kids about your God. And so that's something that we try to encourage each other to remember, just if we're sitting at the river or, you know, even at home. But in nature, it's, it's profound. You know, God is profound. Inside the walls of our house, He's there too. But we have to get out and, and enjoy what He's done. So, and one thing that we've really kind of believed in is like, 
we're going to spend money on experiences, not stuff. And so we're so excited that we got to do this with you guys because we've been wanting to spend more time with our friends. <laughs> and um, so this was just like a beautiful day for us. Yeah, being invited along is like a, it's a shock. You know, it's a, it starts you like, yeah, we're going to do this. We could, we could be passive on a Saturday or we could go do something and, and see something. So. Thanks. Yeah. We appreciate it. Okay, so on the way back from Harrison, we passed through this little town called Branson. You know, we have these season passes when these really cool parks over here called Whitewater. Fun little family spot. So we've got to go in a cave today. We've got to play in a river with friends. We're getting ready to go to a water park. The only thing that can make this better is fireworks. Okay, so another thing that is home to the Ozarks is Bass Pro. As a matter of fact, Springfield, Missouri, on the southern, southwest part of the state, is where Johnny Morris, who's the founder of Bass Pro, got his start out of his dad's uh, liquor store, or his uncle's, uncle's liquor store. It was called the Brown Derby. Everyone, I think, in America knows what Bass Pro is. They make bass tracker boats, uh, fishing lures and tackle and all that kind of stuff, but uh, they're really well known for like really large retail spaces. And this has got to be the biggest one, I think, in the world. It is massive. Um, so we're going to walk you through it, kind of to see just how big it is. But Johnny Morris plays a really important role down here in the Ozarks, uh, not just for what he does with Bass Pro, but he's a huge like uh, land and nature uh, conservationist. So he buys up big swaths of land. Uh, he bought up one really big notable piece of land down uh, south of Branson off of Table Rock Lake, which we're going to show you. It's gorgeous. And uh, he puts resorts on these lands for people who just want to come out and enjoy nature, uh, enjoy life on the water, hunting, fishing, things like that. As a matter of fact, inside this Bass Pro, he has a, a wildlife aquarium. He has a NASPAR museum. He has a museum of how Bass Pro got started and tons and tons of other stuff. Daniel loves this place. He wants to go fishing today, so I promised we'd get him some fishing lures. What do we want to get, bud? We want to get um, worms. Is that what the fish eat? Yeah. Okay, so this is just the bait and tackle section of the store. And I don't know if you can tell how big it is, but I imagine any type of lure you could possibly want on planet Earth a fishing rod, you name it, anything with fishing can probably be found right here. So, so Jess, what do you got here? This. Oh, 
don't even know what it is, honestly, but I just remember it from childhood. My dad thought it was hilarious to stick his finger in this wherever we were in Walmart, whoever, whoever carried this, and would go behind my brothers and stick it under their nose. It smells horrible. Who wants to take a sniff of this? We could hardly ride home with the boys after. Go give it a shot. Give it a big whiff, Eagle. See it? tons of stuff to see. You could literally spend the whole day. Uh, this is about the size of a shopping mall. And, uh, you know, kudos to, to Johnny Morris because the Ozarks are beautiful in part to him. And we're going to show you just one of his little legacies that he's leaving behind in Branson a little bit later. But shout out to Keith Mock, who hopefully you're watching this. You need to come to see this. You won't regret it. Hey there, I hope you're really enjoying the video. And if you are, there's two things you can do. The first thing is you can subscribe down below. What better way to finish off this episode than right here where Daniel's been wanting to come all along? Where are we, buddy? Uh, we're at the racetracks. The racetrack. We have some friends here tonight in the race, right? Uh huh. These are real races, real cash prizes. These races are huge here in Missouri, and we can't wait to get out there and see it. to start racing. Do you get nervous? Uh, no. No? no. Good. No. That's good. Yeah. She would be freaking out right now. Yeah. So, so what I'm learning is that Tony's not just the race car driver. He's also the pit crew, the pit boss, the tool guy, the wrench turner. The ladies man. <laughs> so I'm out here and lo and behold, one of my buddies from work, Justin Yako, uh, who is a former cage fighter, dude's a total savage, is also an aggressive race car driver. He's been doing this for a couple of years now. Uh, he's in the feature race, meaning that he placed in his first race and now he's combining with the best racers out here tonight and he's actually racing for a prize. So. Uh, the zombie, Justin Yako, car number 11. Go get him, Tony. Have fun, bud.
Well, that's it guys. That wraps up this week's episode of the Ozarks. And as I'm sure it is the case with many content creators out there, we didn't get to nearly the stuff we wanted to. And even the things we did see, there's no way we could share it all with you, even though this is an extended episode. Yeah. Um, we didn't get to see Devil's Den. We didn't get to see certain parts of the Buffalo River that we really wanted to. Uh, the whole east side of Missouri where Johnson's Shut-In is, is like a phenomenal, famous place to go to. St. Louis, the Arch, Lake yeah. of the Ozarks. Table uh, Rock Lake, we didn't actually get on the lake to show you. But we're really thankful that we got to come here and, and share this with you. Yeah. Like I so said, we've been living here. This has been home for us for a while. Can't yeah. believe it's taken us this long to actually capture this region. So what was your favorite? My favorite part had to be anything to do with friends because we're surrounded by awesome friends here. Um, and we went to the Buffalo River with some of them and the Ponca Wilderness area where we went on the Lost Valley Trail. Uh, doing adventures with the people you love it, it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. So now time for the big announcement. Uh, you already know we're filming season two as we speak. As you're watching this, we're probably editing or still on the trip, but tell them where we're going to. Yes, I would love to. We're headed to the great American West. Yes. So that means we're going to Wyoming, Montana, Colorado. Uh, we're hitting three national parks. We're going to Yellowstone National Park, Grand Tetons, and Rocky Mountain National Park. Driving through Bozeman, Montana, Jackson, Wyoming, Breckenridge, Colorado, Estes, Colorado, um, uh, some parts of North Dakota and the southern part of Montana. This is a bucket list trip for us because yes. all these sites are places we've, we've dreamed of going to. We, we, there's even places we've wanted to, but we just knew for time that we wouldn't be able to make it happen because we're not full-time RVers yeah. yet. Uh, but nonetheless, we are stoked. And just as we were talking about, you know, the difference maker for this past episode is having people uh, doing the journey with you. Well, the other part of the announcement is that uh, we're gonna have people doing this with us. So my mom and dad, uh, Doug and Karen Friesen, saw last year's episode when we went to the Southwest. They got totally stoked about it. They wanna do this with us. So yes. they likewise are running an RV. They're gonna be doing the whole entire trip, all the different sites with us. The kids are super pumped because grandma and grandpa are coming. Um, oh yeah. And me too. Yeah, I we can't wait. We cannot I'm so wait. Excited. So super, super excited. So two things as we finish this out. First, we've had tons of questions from people who are not full-time RVers like ourselves and, have, and are wondering, you know, how do you go about getting an RV, a camper, booking sites, planning your routes, all that stuff. Um, we want to hear questions like this because just like you guys, we started from scratch, having no experience and slowly waded our feet into the water. And we, we haven't looked back since we got the same. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're and we love it. Yeah. And we want to share what limited knowledge we have with you so you can get out there and make these kind of journeys happen with you and your families. The friends of ours who have done it, it they said it's been a game changer for family yeah. vacations and creating memories with their kids. Very affordable, but just just total total fun. So here's what we want you to do email us your questions or text us your questions or go on to Instagram, go to our YouTube channel, leave questions in the comment sections. We're going to give a whole episode just to answer your questions at some point on this trip, probably two to three weeks uh, down the road. So please be sure to do that. We can't wait to share them with you and also hear from you as to how you're getting out there and making uh, life's journey exciting for you and your loved ones. Yeah. Second thing is, if you find value in what it is we're creating, if you enjoy this content, please do two things. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. If you really, really like what we're doing, please share with a friend. Uh, that's the highest compliment you can pay us. I've heard this all my life. People like helping people they like. We love doing this for you. And if you enjoy this, please just do us a favor by hitting that like button. And we really appreciate it. And we thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. So until then, check out this short little preview for season two.